It clearly is the case uh, that the mindset, they sort of act as heuristics. As we talked about earlier, they can limit what the number of things to focus on. Because one thing that is really stressful is trying to focus on everything all the time. I mean, trying to navigate the public health around anything, the public health information around anything is kind of overwhelming. But the way I think about mindset is that it's mindsets are kind of a portal between conscious and subconscious processes. They operate as a default setting of the mind, right? So if sort of programmed in there, you have stress equals bad. That's going to be something maybe conscious, but it doesn't have to be conscious, right? You don't, people don't have to know their mindsets about stress until they're asked, really. It's, that's been programmed in through our upbringing, through public health messages and through media and other things. And it kind of sits there as an assumption in the brain. And the brain is then figuring out how should it respond to this situation. And if the assumption, the default, the programming is stress is bad, that's going to through our subconscious trigger all the things that's like, okay, well, I need to rev up the things that protect me versus rev up the things that help me grow. That's at least how I think about it. And what's cool about it is that because it operates as a sort of portal, it communicates with more, you know, subconscious physiological processes, but it can also be accessed through our consciousness, right? So just talking about this, right, for your listeners, they're now invited to bring their stress mindsets up to the consciousness and say, what is my stress mindset? How do, am I thinking about stress? Can I reprogram that? Can I start to think about it as more enhancing? That takes a little bit of a con- conscious work potentially, but then once you do that, it can, that can kind of operate in the background, influencing how your body responds. And you don't have to say, okay, I'm stressed. I better tell my you know, <laughs> anabolic hormones. To, right. that, that doesn't right. work that way. No. Um, but these mindsets can help with the translational process. I love the idea that mindsets are at the interface between the conscious and subconscious. I am Brian. Welcome to Brian and Paul. We're continuing this discussion between Andrew Huberman and Aaliyah Crum about mindsets and stress. The exciting thing about this episode is the fact that we're discussing tools to help us achieve a stress-enhancing mindset. Imagine going from the stress is debilitating and crushing me to stress is enhancing my focus and my ability to achieve goals and objectives and to make progress in life. That's why I'm excited to bring this discussion to you. Let's jump into it. As you mentioned, for stress, you see a lot in the stresses will crush you and then you can also find evidence that stress will grow you. What's the most adaptive way to think about stress? Mm-hmm. Uh, and should we talk about our stress? Should we not talk about our stress? Is there a way that we can <laughs> leverage stress to our advantage? Great. By and large, come from a place of how do you manage stress? How do you cope with it? Which implies how do you fight against it? Vacation, right? fight massages, against it. <laughs> yoga yeah. classes. Or and, yeah. Fight against it oh, or right. check out exactly. from it, right? Exactly. The real challenge is how do we leverage it? How do we utilize it? How do we work with it? Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts on this. The first and most important thing is to clarify our definition of stress. The negative stress mindset is so insidious that now people define stress with its negative consequences. So the first step is to decouple that and to realize that stress is a neutral, (laughs) right, yet to be determined effect of experiencing or anticipating adversity in your goal-related efforts. So let me unpack that a little more. You can be in the midst of it, or you could just be worried about something happening. That's one aspect. Second is adversity or challenge, so something that's working against you. But the third piece is critical, and that is in your goal-related efforts. What that means is that we only stress about things we care about, things that matter to us. So this is really important because stress is linked with, it's the other side of the coin of things we care about. That's the first thing to realize, that as humans, we stress because we care, and we don't stress about things we don't care about. So the simplified example I like to use is, you know, if Johnny was failing school, that wouldn't stress you out unless Johnny was your son. 
or you were Johnny, or you really cared about the educating the Johnnies of the world, right? It only becomes stressful to the extent that you care about it. So why are we trying to fight or run away or hide or merely cope with our stress or overcome it through our massages when the stress is connected to the things we care about? So then the question becomes, okay, if that's true, how can I better utilize or leverage or respond to the inevitable stresses that we're going to experience? I'm not saying go out and seek out more stress. What I am saying is that you're going to experience stress if you have any cares or values or passions, and most all of us do. Then what do you do? And we've developed a three-step approach to adopting a stresses-enhancing mindset. And briefly, it's the first step is to just acknowledge that you're stressed, to own it, see it, be mindful of it. The second step is to welcome it. Uh, why would you welcome it? You welcome it because inherently in that stress is something you care about. So you're using it as an opportunity to reconnect to what is it that I care about here? And then the third step is to utilize the stress response to achieve the thing you care about, not spend your time, money, effort, energy trying to get rid of the stress. Does that make sense? Makes can... sense. <laughs> and, I, and I love it as somebody whose laboratory studies the physiological effects of stress, the, the effects that impress me the most are, for instance, the narrowing of visual attention that it then um, drives a capacity to parse time more finely, which then drives a capacity to process information faster. It's, it's almost like a superpower. Right. Yes, it can feel uncomfortable often. I love the idea that acknowledging it, um, embracing it, yeah. and then understanding its power and leveraging that power, uh, I think is in... It, what I like so much about that framework is that the stress response is very generic. We, unlike the relaxation response, we don't actually have to train up the stress response. Right. So we all kind of get this as a, as a freebie. And then it sounds like it's a question of what we end up doing with that. Right. And Hans Selye, father of stress, said himself, it's a nonspecific response, right? So it's, it, it occurs. It's what you're doing with it. It's how you're channeling it. Yeah, like we talked about before, what most people do is they stress about the stress, which then over-exacerbates it, or they check out from the stress, which leads to depression and anhedonia, because by checking out from stress, you're also checking out from the things we care about. What is it that you are caring about right now that's causing you stress? And is that something that you're caring about actually worth the stress? Here's another simple example from my personal life about something that apparently I cared a lot about that caused me stress, but actually wasn't worth it. When driving, yes, driving, sometimes, and by sometimes I mean often, nearly every day that I drove, I would get offended. And sometimes I still do at what I perceived are stupid drivers. Of course, it's always the other driver, right? Someone would cut me off, drive too slow for no apparent reason or anything else. I would curse and I would swear and I would get upset. And truly, as I began this journey of learning mindsets and thinking about how they impact me, this is one of the things that I thought about. And so I began to think about acknowledging how I'm feeling, not necessarily why I'm feeling that way. Of course, it's a stupid driver, but just that I am feeling that way. Understanding that this is something that's causing me stress in this immediate moment as I'm driving down the road. Now, step two, embracing it. Now, this was the time that I started asking myself, is this worth caring about? Why am I so impacted by this other person? that I probably will never talk to, never see again. And I really came to the answer that it was no. So at the embracing it part, actually for me, transitioned into understanding that it was worth something to just let go and bypass. Because step three is understanding the power. I was allowing myself to feel this element of road rage, varying degrees of how that impacted me. And then was I driving smarter? safer? Was I more focused or less focused? Well, the stress was causing me to be focused, but focused on what? And what was my response? In this case, I allowed myself to get triggered and upset 
for something that I had no control over, except for how I responded against someone that I was simply passing by on the road, just didn't make sense to me. So I slowly began to change my mindset about these offensive drivers because it was not adding value to my life and my experience. Often I still get triggered, yet my response is much more subdued and peaceful. I hear the words of Dale Carnegie in his book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, where he says, pity those instead of worrying about those that do not know better. Recently, I started saying either verbally or mentally in the words of the great Mr. T from the 18 original TV series, I pity the fool. I pity the fool. And this immediately changes my state, brings a smile to my face, makes me laugh, which then makes it incredibly easy to let it go. And so now I'm much calmer relaxed and focused on either the podcast I'm listening to or my music so that I enjoy my driving much, much more. Aaliyah Crumb's approach of acknowledging, embracing, and understanding the power of stress with our mindsets and utilizing it as a process to leverage your mindset is a powerful tool to either enhance your stress and make it a positive experience or to reflect and begin to eliminate it as in my own personal experience. And so that's why I love this idea of understanding that stress is a reflection of something we care about. And why do I care about Johnny the driver? Probably more related to my ego than anything else. And so as I transition that idea of bridging the mindset from the conscious to the subconscious, I'm beginning to understand and make these positive changes to help me make progress in how I view, interpret, and perceive my experiences and thoughts and how they impact me. And I highly suggest that you consider this approach when you're confronting your own stresses so that you can transition into removing or eliminating them or changing it into a stress-enhancing mindset. We appreciate you spending time with us today. And if you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking it or subscribing to the channel. Thank you.